Good evening. Welcome to another Mothman podcast. You know, we're out there in a lot of different time zones, and so I would like to thank all of our listeners in the U.S., in Canada, in India, United Kingdom, South Africa, Australia, Bangladesh, Germany, and Netherlands. We hope that you guys really enjoy our episodes, and I hope that uh, if I forgot any country, please let me know, or I'll try to find out next week, and and thank you, too. But uh, I just want to put out a special thanks to you guys. Um, My name is Daryl Rourke. I'm the host, and with me is... I'm Ann. And Ann, tell the people how they can uh, listen to us over the air. Okay, you, you can listen to our podcast on Spreaker, Spotify, Apple Podcast, iHeartRadio, Google Podcast, CastBox, SoundCloud, and Deezer. And if they want to make contact with us, how would they make contact with us? Okay, they can email us at mothmanpodcast at gmail.com. And also, if you want to call in and call me, um, you can feel free to call me at 336-268-0018. And please leave a message because we get so many spam calls that we don't answer every call. So if you leave a message, I will call you right back uh, or as soon as I can. But leave a number so we can get in contact with you. And tonight we're going to go back into where we were at in the the past. uh, Talking about extraterrestrials, extra dimensionals, and interdimensionals. Um... And do you know the difference? Because every time we start doing this research, I hear one person say interdimensionals, and I hear another person say extra dimensionals. What, what's your understanding on inner and extra? Okay, interdimensionals, I would assume, mean that they are in our dimension. Extra dimensionals would be outside of our dimension. Okay. And, you know, I looked, kind of looked it up and it says, uh, you're right, the uh, extra is originating outside the known physical reality of the universe at which which we live in. And inner is existing or traveling between dimensions of the same time and space that we live in. They're kind of a parallel to what we're doing here and now in, in our lives. And so um, the belief is there that they're just popping in and popping out from, you know, a realm parallel to us. And the extra are coming in from another universe because the space is so so vast that there's no beginning and no end. And you and I probably can't comprehend that. I know I can't. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, when you look at that, that's, um, that's really wild. It's way out there. And it kind of mag- mind boggles. <laughs> so um, we've started doing some research into some things that's uh, kind of what the scientists are looking at right now. And so Ann's got a, a great story that we're going to start out with and uh, just trying to lay the groundwork of uh, about the intra... I, th- I believe that's the intra... extra dimensionals, right? Yes, Okay, I'll get it out here in a minute. Okay. <laughs> All right, so this was uh, what, what uh, John D'Souza goes over in his first chapter of his book. And it starts with the Art Bell uh, radio show. In fall of uh, 1997, it was playing late at night, and they were discussing Area 51. The show cleared its phone lines and asked for calls from current or former former employees of Area 51. They didn't really have a lot of calls. They were mostly third-hand accounts of happenings. But then a call came through... And it was a young man. He sounded very panicky and afraid. And he said that he was a former employee that had been j- discharged from Area 51 about a week ago. And he's been on the run. And that they would triangulate his location very soon. Uh, he quickly talked about extraterrestrials and their relationship to the human rulers of our planet. Then he ended up breaking down into sobs. And was saying that he knew he wouldn't survive much longer. He then began to answer questions that Art Bell and other people were asking him. 
and then there was a bud, a buzz, a high pitched squeal, and then nothing. The radio boards and screens said transmission lost, and it was just dead air. The show came back on to chaos. The DJs didn't really know what they were doing or what was going on. And uh, they had just lost their transmission. We do have a clip of this that we're going to play for you. If we can get it up and running here. Well, okay. I'm on the air. Hello. Hello, Art. Yes. Hi. Um, I, 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 I don't have a whole lot of uh, time. Um, well, look, look, let's begin yeah. by finding out whether you're using this line properly or not. Uh, Area 51. Yeah, um, that's right. Were you an employee or are you now? I, I, a former employee. Former um, employee. I, I, I was let go on a medical discharge about a week ago. And, and <laughs> I, I, I've kind of been running a, across the country. Um, oh, man, I don't know where to start. They're... they're uh, they're they're, they're going to, um, they'll triangulate on this position really, really soon. So um, you can't spend a lot of time on the phone. So give us t something quick. Okay. Um, um, okay, what, what we're thinking of as, as aliens are, they're, uh, they're, they're extra dimensional beings that an earlier precursor of the, um, the space program made contact with. Uh, they they are not what they claim to be. Uh, they have infiltrated a lot of uh, uh, a lot of aspects of, of of the military establishment, particularly the Area 51. Uh, the, the disasters that are coming, they the, the military. I'm sorry, the, the government knows about them, and there's a lot of safe areas in this world that they could begin moving the population to now aren't but they're not doing they're not doing anything they are not they want the major population centers wiped out so that the, the few that are left will be more easily controllable discharge <laughs> The audio is breaking up at this point in the uh, interview. I, I started getting... This is when the signal from the satellite was dropped. Well, this was certainly interesting. We are now on a backup system, everybody. A backup system. And uh, you, that one caller that I had on the air... <laughs> I guess we were about in the middle of his transmission, his telephone call, which was a, one of the strangest ones I've ever had, and the entire transmitting system by satellite went down here, and we were notified we were off the air, and it would appear to be from this end, and some sort of uh, massive transmit failure. So we are now using a backup system to be on the air, and not that I would normally believe this kind of thing, mind you, but... I can't help but wonder if somebody, somebody zapped us in some way. Uh, we'll find out. And it, the video noted that this had never happened on Art Bell's show before. And it was just very strange that it happened during this call. And one other thing that was real strange is that back in 1997, um, there was not a lot of use in the verbiage to correlate um, mm -hmm. Probably get triangulate. Back, try gonna hit mm -hmm. me. I'll get that now there too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, easy for you to say. Um, but anyway, that was one of the things that I thought was really curious about the whole whole deal because I know from um, in the military, you know, it was hard for us to find a point using two or three different angles to uh, to coordinate the the search, but. Um, he, he was knowledgeable about certain things that probably a lot of other people were not knowledgeable of in 1997. So that really, um, that really brought my attention. In the book, it actually says that that wasn't, that wasn't, what you just heard was not exactly what the, the listeners heard. 
they actually heard more and it's been cut off I don't know who's cut it off but um, what they actually heard was our space program came across unexpected alien entities these beings attached themselves to members of our space program returned with them and infu infiltrated our military and government they injected themselves like a virus through area 51 they told our governments of great disasters that are coming and where would be most impacted by these impending catastrophes. He said that the national governments know of safe areas that they could move people to, but they aren't moving people because they want to thin the herds. They want to do this so that the remaining people are easier to control and this will not affect the aliens because they aren't physical, they are from other dimensions. Wow, that's yeah. heavy. Um. Let me just give you a definition uh, for those that aren't aware of what extra dimensionals are. They are non-terrestrial, intelligent life forms who are visiting our dimension of time and space as transitory beings from outside the plane of physical time and space. Okay, and here again, I want you to um, I want you to read a quote <clears throat> that we have from our uh, research. Well, that was strange. It really was. <laughs> Who's laughing in my background? Maybe it's an alien. East of the Rockies, you're on. You know. Weird things happen when you start talking about these things. That's true. Uh, you want me so, to read that? Yeah, I want you to... Uh, now, this is a quote from some of our research. Okay. By everything, we mean all the areas in which we have been deceived to believe the physical world is the beginning and end of all things. The extra dimensionals is the stark revelation of where alien visitors are actually coming from and to where they are returning. Understanding extra dimensionality is the way to unfold the truth of the paranormal, the spiritual, and even the physical world. These visitors have been with us since time immemorial, and their message, their messages to us are everywhere around us. Once we awaken to numerous mile-long shadows cast by these ancient ships hanging over our major cities, soundless, motionless, maddening, it will be too late. It is in these final moments that we can still, with open minds and clear hearts, decipher the truth truth of extra dimensionality. You know, that's, um, that reminds me of some of the movies that you've seen. Mm -hmm. Fourth of July and things like that when the aliens come and they hover over our cities and start destroying our cities. Um, you know, a lot of... Um, the data that they use from for movies is taken from facts. You know, not necessarily those facts, but it's it's really funny that um, you hear the same old stories over and over and over again. Where are they coming from? Yes, and I've always heard that the truth is stranger than fiction a lot of times. Yeah, and it really is. And what I can't understand is, okay, we've got all these pictures, and we got NASA going out looking for um, remnants of earlier civilizations um, and they don't really give us anything. They give us, we see these really clear pictures that are distorted. Mm -hmm. they're, they're bright in color, but they're distorted in facts. So what I look at is, is what are you trying to hide from me? Exactly. And I don't believe all of our camera systems um, are that bad. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You got an iPhone now that can take a picture of you. Bump on your nose from 500 feet. So mm -hmm. <laughs> they, can't, uh, they can't get that out in space. But uh, what are they trying to hide? That's what I'm trying to wonder. Well, what I'm wondering is what are they looking for? They're, they're hiding the truth from us. But what are they looking for if the government is already aware that these beings are extra dimensional as opposed to extraterrestrial? Then what are they doing out there? What are they looking for? Well, yeah, and that, um, we talk about the, it appears, I don't know, maybe we've 
corrupted our atmosphere and we've caused this, they claim in the world it's heating up, the earth mm-hmm. is heating up. Um, but it's, it appears that back in the Roman days and prior to that, that the these entities could move in and out a lot easier than they can now because there's so much more proof back in those days than there are now. Yeah. So if they can move back and forth, but have we corrupted their method of, of you know, coming into the our universe, or is there something else going on? Or I, you know, I, I, you know, I don't know the answer. Maybe, maybe back then the people weren't <laughs> smart enough to try to figure things out and try to um, influence them or. or send a missile up to shoot them down, that sort of thing. True, but, but um, if they're extra-dimensional, they might not even be coming from the sky. Yeah, and but here again, why are we not... We are seeing a lot. We're seeing a lot that they're not talking about. Yeah. But back then, there was actually more proof. You see pictures of them on uh, the walls in the pyramids, and you mm-hmm. see pictures of them on the walls in caves, and and you just wonder why they would show themselves so much more back then, more than they do now because we don't ever see them. We see the, the crafts mostly. Yes. Um, if we see them, I'm not aware of it, and maybe they do, and we just don't know about it. But um, uh, there's another little thing that I want to get into, and it'll probably be in our next podcast, but we'll talk about uh, there was a uh, nuclear test out in New Mexico, mm-hmm. and uh, right a couple of days after that, there was a... Um, flying object it wasn't a flying saucer it was more of a apricot type deal mm-hmm. uh, that came down and two young boys were out riding their father's farmland uh counting cows and, and checking the fence line and they saw it come down over their heads and they went to it and they saw what was inside it and so we'll discuss a little bit of that on our next podcast okay so uh, that's something to look forward to it reminds me a lot of that movie nope no. Nope. Uh, by Jordan Peele. Have you seen it? I haven't. Tell me a little bit about that one. It's about um, what they think is a flying saucer, and it's moving above these people's home. Right. And it's been a while since I've watched it. But anyways, they end up finding out it's, it's a living, uh, like, being. It's like a big animal. That's oh, okay. Like, and it's, I think it was, like, eating people. and Right. Yeah, it's a good movie. All right, I have to look at that one. Maybe our fans will look at it, too. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it all draws back to the, the whole UFO thing, interdimensional, uh, extraterrestrial, extra-dimensional, that the whole fact is. It's like the Mothman, you know. We go back, and, and the Mothman's really what started all this because I was really interested in the Mothman and started doing research, and, and it led to this podcast, but... Um, even back then, flying saucers or flying entities were seen in that area of West Virginia, Point Pleasant, West Virginia. And um, how, how do we know that the Mothman wasn't um, extra dimensional? Very true. And, and I've actually been out there to the bunkers where he was supposedly seen. I didn't see him, but they are very, it's something I've never seen in my area. Right. It's um, hollow on the, it's, it's kind of like a, a half of a sphere, hollow on the inside, has great acoustics, and graffiti everywhere. Yeah, and concrete. Well, I'm concrete. sure some of the graffiti came <laughs> after the, the Mothman movie when people started going up there. Yeah. But um, I just want our fans to know that uh, we do plan a live podcast from that area in 2024. So, you know, we'll, we'll be staging that from uh, the festival that they have up there every year. Yes. Maybe we get to talk to some people. Who knows? We might even get to talk to some people that was actually there, although they're they're like me. They're aging every day. They so uh, uh, we'll, we'll just see what we can find out. Okay. Uh, that pretty much covers tonight's episode because we're, we don't want to bombard you guys with a whole lot of stuff that when we're going to keep to keep searching for, answers and we're going to keep searching for facts and uh, i believe you're going to like next week's episode so uh, be sure to tune in for that so i want to thank you for listening to mothman tonight and and would you tell them again how they can find us on the radio sure and i also want to put out there if you know anything about these extra dimensionals that you would like to give us information 
please send us the email at mothmanpodcast at gmail.com. And you can listen to us on Spreaker, Spotify, Apple Podcast, iHeartRadio, Google Podcast, Castbox, SoundCloud, and Deezer. Well, that draws the end of another great Mothman episode. I hope you're going to tune in for the future episodes. We've got a lot of, of exciting information we want to put out there. So from the Mothman, Daryl, good night. And have a good evening. Thank you, Ann. Good night. Good night. <laughs>